Alright guys, let's continue with text rendering in OpenGL using the FreeTypeGL library. Now in the previous video we got FreeTypeGL up and running along with all of its dependencies and today we will learn how to integrate it into our OpenGL application. But before we do that, I'd like to say a big thank you to Alan who recently joined the OpenGL underground. If you too would like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com slash OGLDev or by joining the YouTube channel as a member. Now, if you want to skip building FreeTypeGL from scratch and basically go directly into this video, then you can simply take the binaries that I've generated and are checked into my Git repo. So let me show you where these are. So assuming that you've cloned the repo as OGL dev, go down to the Windows directory and there under lib, we have a FreeType lib and FreeTypeGL.lib as well as OpenGL32.lib, which is also required for, uh, for a couple of OpenGL functions. And also under DLL, we have um, FreeType DLL. And that's basically what you need in terms of linking and running. Now working with FreeTypeGL can be somewhat of a challenge because the API is a bit low level. So you need to combine several components together to make it work. I guess this is because there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can render text in terms of fonts and colors and various effects as, as you saw uh, in the demos. So my intention for today is to show you a higher level API that I've created that allows me to very easily integrate it into my own code and render text in a single function call. This API can of course be extended and provide you with more functionality. Basically what I did was to take one of FreeTypeGL demos and turn it into this API. So if we go back to OGL dev to the common folder, we have FreeTypeGL. And what you see here is basically uh, copied from the FreeTypeGL repository, except for these two files, FreeTypeGL.h and CPP, which I will show you uh, in a minute. And we also have fonts here from a free type gel repo. So what we have here are true type fonts. And as you can see for each uh, file, for each true type font file, we also have a license, which you should definitely check if you plan to do anything serious with that. So if we go back one folder up, as I said, all the files are from the free type gel repo, except these two, which were created by me and they provide you with the API. Now, we also have a couple of C files here from the demo, uh, but what I did was to include them directly inside freetypegl.cpp. As you can see, we have extern C here before we include these files because they are regular C files. Well, this is a CPP file. Now, this is a bit unorthodox, but uh, it makes my life a bit simpler. If you don't want to go this way, you can simply include them directly uh, with the, with your sources. So now let's go to OpenGL tutorials and I have a new tutorial here, tutorial 46, a free type GL demo. And so in the source files, I have four files. Okay, so I have this file, free type GL CPP. And I've also got OGL dev glfw.cpp here and OGL dev util.cpp, which I'm using to initialize the glfw library and create the window and a few uh, utility functions here. So back to freetypegl.cpp. Again, if you don't want to include those C files this way, you can drop this and simply make them part of the make file or uh, Visual Studio solution or whatever build environment that you're using. Now let's go to freetypegl.h. And what we have here are a few colors that I've defined. And this is of course a non-exhaustive list, you can add them uh, as you wish. Next, we have a few enums here for the font types. And as you can see, each of them matches uh, one of the fonts that we saw in the fonts directory. So the idea is that in freetypegl.cpp, we have an array here for the font path. And for each enum, we have a matching uh, path here to the font file. So when you initialize the API, all of these fonts are loaded, and then you can specify the one that you want using one of these enums. 
Next, we have the API itself, which is called font renderer. And you initialize it by calling init font renderer. It takes the window width and the window height. Now, the main function that you will use is called render text, which takes the font type, which of course is one of the enums that we saw, as well as a top and bottom color. Because the way that this function works is that it allows you to interpolate between uh, two colors across the font, a top color and a bottom color. Next, we have X and Y, which are the position in the window where the render text will go. And they are calculated from the bottom left corner. Okay, bottom left corner is the zero, zero position as it is usually done uh, in Op OpenGL. We can see that in textures as well. And finally, we have the text itself that you want to render. Now, if you're interested in using a single color for this text message, then you can simply use uh, the other function, the other render text function, which takes a single color and calls uh, the first one uh, using color as both the top color and the bottom color. Okay, so this is for convenience. Five parameters instead of six. Now in the private section, we have a few free type GL components that I've mentioned. We have a texture atlas, a vertex buffer, a texture font, etc. But they are hidden in a way that you don't really need to understand how they work. You can simply use this API. Now let's go to the main application code in freetypegldemo.cpp. And as you can see, this is a very simple skeleton of an OpenGL application. You should have no problem in understanding this. We have an include here for freetypegl.h, our API. And in the private section, we have an instance of the font renderer. Okay, so in the init function of this class, in addition to creating the window, and initializing glfw callbacks, we also call init font renderer with the width and height of the window. Okay, now in the render function, we call gil clear, okay, to clear the window, and we call render text. Now the parameters are the font type, which is lobster in this case, so this sounds like a tasty text, okay, and then the top color, red, the bottom color blue, so we are interpolating between these guys. Next we have X and Y, and finally the text. Now X and Y are defined here. Uh, y is set to be equal to X, X is incremented until it reaches uh, 1000, and then it goes back to zero. So let's try to run this. And as you can see, we have the interpolated color and it goes all the way to 1000 and then it will go back. Okay, let's try another one. Let's uh, try, this time we have a font called Luckiest Guy. So this is cool. And we will interpolate between yellow and they have orange one because there are two oranges. And this time let's take 1000 minus x. Let's try this. And it works pretty cool. Now in order for this to build correctly, we need to update some of the project settings. So let's right click on the project, go to properties. And then in C++ general, I've added an include directory and we have the relevant uh, path to common free type GL. Okay, so where we have uh, freetypegl.h and all the other files that we've copied from freetypegl. And in addition to that, we need to update the linker settings. Okay, so we go to linker and input, and we have a few additional dependencies. Okay, so we have opengl32.lib and freetype.lib and freetypegl.lib. All of them are located in the same directory as glue32.lib and glfw. Lib. Now, it's always a bit dangerous to integrate a piece of unfamiliar OpenGL code into your application because changes to the OpenGL state may have an effect on your main code. So if this happens to you with this API, then I would go to freetypegl.cpp uh, to the render text function and check what is going on here because this is something that I wrote um, very quickly by copying parts 
from one of the demos from FreeType Gel. So it's not encapsulated in a way to avoid any side effects on the main code. So for example, I'm enabling blend here and disabling the depth test as well as backface culling. And then at the end of this function, these guys are re-enabled and blending is disabled. So I'm kind of assuming that the depth test and the backface culling are enabled and that blending is disabled in the main application code, but this may not be the case. So if something stops working, then this would be uh, my first suspect. In addition, we are also binding a texture here and changing the shader program to use free type gel shaders. So this is also something to be aware of. Probably best to put a call to render text at the end of the render function. Okay, so after you finish doing whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, uh, call render text, and then there's a smaller chance that things will break. Okay, so for more content on OpenGL programming, make sure to subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and I will see you on the next one.